Hey guys, Lucas from Magsport here. Today we're going to do some street photography in Shibuya with a manual focus lens. I got my Nikon Z6 II and a Voigtlander 40mm, which is my favorite lens of all time, which I haven't really used with this camera on this channel very much, so today's the day. Um, just before that, please, please, please check us out on Patreon. There are some perks if you support us on there. You can watch these videos a little bit earlier and ad-free. Also, we have a map with a lot of cool photo locations. And of course, check the referral links in the description below. If any of this gear interests you, if you use those links, it really helps out the channel. All right, let's get shooting. I explore. All right, so we just got here around you know, this beautiful golden hour. This, this light's not gonna last very long because it's going behind a building. So very briefly about my settings, um, I'm on F8 and um, aperture mode and I'm using the uh, auto ISO as well and average metering a lot of people ask me about the metering these days I use actually specifically I use center weighted metering and then in the deeper menu you can change it to average so instead of using um, matrix metering Nikon's matrix metering I use average I prefer that these days on the Z system and my compensation right now is minus one because it's so bright out here and I want to get nice contrast and deep shadows so let's see what we get. What I really want is just some interesting uh, people or characters in this beautiful light. Let's see here. So of course, you know, when shooting these videos, in the moment, I might not get anything. And that's always how it is. Where I come out on my own, then it's a little bit, you know, like I might, I might cross the street 20, 30 times. In fact, let's go back to the sunny side. Let's go over here. So when, when shooting like this, I might, you know, just wander around in this light, you know, for a while before I get something good. We literally are just starting out. So I don't think I have anything interesting. But what I'm going for is I just want really high contrast with this bright light and the darker kind of background because there's a lot of shadow around on the buildings. The sun is like, don't want to look right at it, but the sun is going down in this little kind of narrow slot between the buildings over there. So the where it's sunny is actually very limited. All right, so we're gonna cross. See here, this time I'm shooting like into the sun, which is not ideal, but maybe it will work. Uh -huh. It's hard to even like find an interesting subject in all of this crowd and glare. I mean, the light this way is the best. I think the key thing is also to get lower. I realized I did that really quick. Somebody, somebody might trample me. <laughs> All right, let's go to this side now. So basically, I, I talked about my, my main settings already. Um, you know, F8, aperture mode, all that stuff. But the key thing is that I'm, you know, because it's a manual focus lens and this is a manual street photography video that we're doing today. So how am I doing manual focus for this kind of street photography, especially this more, you know, we jump right into this more chaotic kind of um, style of shooting, everything's moving around. So the key is that I'm not actually focusing. I have it preset to a particular distance and we call this technique zone focusing. So I've set the, um, on the focus gauge here, I have a bunch of numbers and I've set it basically to four meters. So between the three and the five, okay, on the camera here. And that means that a certain distance from the camera, everything is gonna be sharp. And in particular, since I'm on F8, and on F8 we have a lot of depth of field, I have a lot of leeway. So if I'm a little bit too close, a little too far, the photo will still be in focus. And then I just maintain the right distance. So like this guy on the bike here is the right distance, this lady as well. And I know that these photos are sharp, right? They're a little bit, they're a little bit blurry, but that's because they're motion blurred. So that's different. Let's try it. Let's try this guy over here. Okay. Yeah, and that I think is pretty sharp. Yeah, right about there. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's cross again. Do it one more time in the, in the, the chaos here. Really, I don't even need to cross. I could wait here for people to come to me. 
Okay. But the key is that when there's, they're at a particular distance, that's when I shoot. Okay. And then I don't have to worry about focusing at all. Let me get low. And then I haven't done this style of shooting in, in a while, honestly. I've been much more uh, meditative and slow in my shooting these days. And this is tricky because it's, um, it's hard to get the timing. It's like there's a lot going on. People are running around. A lot of different subjects. It's hard to know who to focus on. Not focus in the sense of getting the, the sharpness, but focus in the sense of my attention, right? Who, who do I want to actually photograph in these crazy scenes? And let's review those. And yeah, a lot of them plenty sharp. Sometimes people were a little too close, a little too far. That's because just the timing and the judgment of the distance is really hard, you know, in this kind of uh, shooting. And sometimes I knew they were too close, but I just shot anyway because they were kind of interesting. So I just went ahead and did it. All right. I think we have maybe, whoa, look, it's a DeLorean. <laughs> wow. See, that was actually a little bit too close, I think, for uh, uh, maybe just, just in, in the right range. Let's try it one more time because um, that sunshine is going to go away very soon. There's almost none left. It's going to set behind a building over there. Okay, kind of like this guy here. Not super interesting. So see, in a case like this, where I have plenty of time, and he's not moving, and I'm not moving, and also he's way closer than my usual four meter range, then I'm doing this actually manually. So I'm really focusing by just turning the thing. And this is where, compared to a, like my old D4, the Z6 is really nice because you have the EVF. There's more indication of whether it's in focus or not. I can also zoom it, zoom it in. More on that later, but I can zoom it in and get a better idea if it's sharp or not. All right, let's try from here. Again, I'm gonna get low. I think the strategy of me staying put and letting subjects come to me in the middle of the street here made more sense than the other strategy of like wandering around. Okay, there we go. These guys are posing. All right, nice. Okay, I actually did focus on them a little bit. Go back to my zone. Okay. I don't know what I'm trying to get. I'm just trying to get some kind of cool moment. But this is the kind of photography that honestly, it would take, you know, hours and hours of trying. Sometimes you get lucky and, you know, you come out here in the first five minutes, you get a good shot. But in my experience, if I try to do this style of shooting or any style of street photography, it usually takes hours to get something good. I would say let's try one more time and this time I'll shoot into the sun, into the glare, which is extra kind of annoying because I'm looking in the glare, but let's just try it. All right. So yeah, what I was saying is if I want a really manual focus, I could press the plus button on the back of the camera and that zooms in the picture. And then I could actually see for myself if something is sharp. But I'll only do that if I have plenty of time, right? If I'm, things are moving so much, that really is not practical. So instead I rely on the zone, which again, to repeat is, four meters, right now on F8, I get everything sharp between like three and five meters easily. That's pretty easy to guess between three and five meters away. For you Americans out there, that's about nine to 15 feet-ish, right? Maybe a little bit farther. So yeah. So let, let's come over here to relocate a little bit. About to turn green. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna come out here and I'm gonna shoot in this direction behind me. Although you see, I got distracted and that lady was actually pretty cool. Maybe I could do something with the shadows here. The lady with the dog there. Yeah, I could even go to F11, guys, by the way. I said I'm in a fate. But when I'm shooting in this direction, there's so much light. F11 is fine. I might even go to a 500th of a second to avoid motion blur. And honestly, I, again, I don't really see anything interesting. I think it's going to turn red in a few moments. Let's go back.
Now, one question that often comes up is people say, well, why four meters? Why not three? Why not five? The thing is, the closer you focus, the shallower the depth of field actually gets. So, like, if I put it on one meter, then the, the, the room for error is very small. So, it's like, I really have to nail it. Four meters gives me a little bit of leeway. And also, because this is a 40 millimeter, on four meters, I get a pretty good field of view if, if someone's four meters in front of me. But if it's only one meter away, it's a very narrow field of view. I only get like their face, so it's harder to shoot it. Okay. Shoot this way is nice. But then we'll turn around like I was doing before. Yeah, but honestly, it's just, I don't know, like, I was hoping to like get somebody in the crowd that stands out. But today everybody's sort of sort of samey. But in my experience in the crossing, if you shoot enough, sometimes the magic happens. You get a moment where somebody weird or somebody funny kind of you know does something. People run, right, because they want to cross the street. And it's actually already red. So let's go to this side. We're gonna get run over. All right. Let's see here. All right. I'd say let's move on because we did a lot of that stuff, and I think it's uh, it's good enough for now. I'm gonna keep it on F11 for now in the sunshine. In this direction we get a shot. Ah, okay, I got an idea. Let's go over here. Let's go over here, Axel. Mm -hmm. This is nice. I like the way this shadow hits this um, wall here, and then yeah, bam, you get some people going through. So this, you know, I started off with this uh, run and gun in the crossing thing, but this is more often how I shoot. I find a scene that I like, and I kind of set a trap, and I wait for people to come through. And this is where zone focusing also works really well, because I'm just sitting at the distance where I just know that this wall is about four meters from me, and so I know that anybody that passes, you know, within roughly the edge of the wall, it's going to be in my shot. I'm going to move over a little bit. I'm just going to move this way. Maybe actually, you can come over to that side. So then uh, we won't be in each other's shot at all. There we go. Yeah, this is cool. I can see the trains going by up there as well. I'm loving this shadow here. I'm actually going to back up just a little bit, just a touch. Notice I don't really even need to refocus because it's still basically in my zone, even though I moved back a bit. But now I'm getting the whole wall, which I think is better. Although now there are like way too many people on that side. All right, so now there's nobody, which is good. And I just want one person. And this girl is good. There we go, more people. Okay. This guy with the dogs. I oh, don't know, there's too many people. That's what happens. You get a good subject like this dude here, and then a ton of people come through. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, on that note, let's keep going. <laughs> Friendly dogs. All right. We'll keep the settings like this. Mm, let's go this way through this back street. Again, the zone is awesome, so I don't have to refocus here. But I do have to wait for people to move.
What else I like, by the way, is to just do it on f2.8. Because in this case, the background's a little bit busy. Yeah, I like that. And I wanted to kill the background a little bit, so I just went to 2.8. And the beauty of zone focus is it still works. It just means on a bigger aperture like 2.8, you have less room for air. All right, let's go off the crazy busy streets for a little while, take a little break from the, from the you know, chaos, and go over here. All right, so we just did all that craziness on the, on the main Shibuya streets. It's quite chaotic. Um, I don't think I really got any great chance. I don't know. I always feel that way after some shooting like that. But to do that kind of a, a shoot, when I, I do it rare, more rarely these days, honestly, to go out in the crossing and like go back and forth and try to get just the chaotic moment. That's the thing I used to do a lot more often. And just from experience, I know that if you do that and you want a, even a decent shot, you got to do it a lot before you get like the perfect moment or the right person with the right expression. So whatever, it is what it is. But I think uh, it was just fun to demonstrate anyway that that's one way to use zone focus or how to deal with manual focus in street photography. But now we're going to be more on the side streets, take it a little bit more easy, a little bit less, you know, chaotic, but still using the same lens, manual and all that. So we're going to go this way over here to the left. Now one nice thing about the Z6, or any mirrorless I suppose, but this one specifically, is that if I'm manual focusing and I'm looking through the viewfinder, the focus point will turn green when the camera thinks I have acquired focus. So even though the camera doesn't, um, you know, adjust the focus of the lens for me, it doesn't, you know, actually move the lens, um, it does tell me if I'm, like it's reading the focus, so it does tell me if it's in focus or not. Older cameras do that too, but they don't change the color of the focus point. There's a little dot in the bottom left form, uh, corner of the screen on, um, you know, like my D4 and other cameras like that. But, um, you know, on this one, it's better that the focus point turns green because it's more obvious. I don't have to take my eye off the subject because I keep the focus point in the center. And of course, I can move it around as well. So that's helpful. But as I said, that's only if I'm actually manually focusing. Usually I'm just using zone, in which case it works exactly the same way on this camera as it does on a DE4 or whatever other camera. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of okay. Am I still in the right zone? Yeah, barely. It might be, it's hard to tell, but I feel like it is sharp. That was just on the edge of my four meter zone. That's the nice thing with using an aperture like I'm on 5.6 right now, is you don't need to be that precise with the zone. Later, as it gets darker, I'll be using bigger and bigger apertures like I did earlier. Eventually, I, I can even do it on f2. I've done zone focusing on f2 and it's worked well, but then you do need to actually be precise. I need to really nail the distance. Otherwise, you know, it's not gonna be in focus. Okay. Let's go, let's go in this little side street here. And then we'll come back to the main street. Uh, well, this guy's not that interesting. Here we go to 2.8, because it's a bit dark. Okay. All right, let's keep going. It's kind of cool with the blue arrow. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to write home about in terms of a photo, but it's all right. Okay. Now people do ask me sometimes about shooting from the hip. And if you're going to use, if you're going to shoot from the hip, the best way to do it is to zone focus with a lens like this. I don't often do it anymore these days because I, I find I'd rather just be open about what I'm doing, but every once in a while I might employ the technique, because I mean I can do it, I know how to do it, when I feel I don't have time to shoot something, like I see something so last moment that I don't even have time to bring it up, so I'll just quickly, I'll just fire one off. So I tend to keep the camera kind of at the ready, so even though I might not be shooting, I like to keep it pointed forward, and just kind of ready to go in case something happens. Every once in a while I'll get a really cool shot that way, it's very rare, but it, it happens. Um, I think, you know, knowing how to shoot from the hip is a, 
it's like a tool in your arsenal. You should have it. You should have the ability. But I don't think you should rely on it. And I know that from experience because I probably spent about a year relying on it. Like I did it a lot. And um, yeah, and then I, and then I realized I'm um, over, overcompensating, over relying on this technique and I kind of backed off. I realized I should be more uh, you know, direct in my approach. Okay, let's cross here. The cars go that way. Shibuya is noisy and busy as ever. Back to four meters here. Make sure when I'm doing, you know, using a manual lens like this, I'm regularly looking to see what my zone is. Am I, well, you know, because sometimes you bump this, it gets messed up. Oops, I got to put it back. Yep, back on four meters, ready to go. And in a sense, it's the fastest way to shoot. It's faster than, than autofocus because <laughs> it's faster than autofocus because you don't it takes zero time to focus as long as you're in the right distance right this is the caveat but it is it is cool that you can you can react things to things extremely quickly if you employ zone focus and, and so that's kind of one thing is that to me it's a real shame that um modern af lenses don't have the focus gauge anymore. I get why they take them off for cost reasons. Most people don't use them. But it is a shame because even if you have an AF lens, you can use zone focus, right? But it's kind of hard to do on a lot of autofocus lenses. Um, even the, the new like Nikon ones that have the, the little LED screen on top, like the, the, the Z lens, you know, the high-end Z lenses have that. It feels like a little bit imprecise. Like, is it really as exact as this, where I know I'm focusing the exact same distance every time? Because consistency is very important for this, obviously, right? I don't know, I haven't tested them, but it doesn't feel right to use them the way you can use, use this one. I'm on F2.8 right now, because it's pretty gloomy in these side streets. I know we've, we've explored Shibuya many times uh, in previous videos, so today I want to try to go to areas that we haven't been to before. I think we'll go up the hill on the, on the, that we're heading towards here. We're kind of going uphill. This area is called Dogenzaka, and it's a bit of a you know, red light district. <laughs> so it's kind of seedy. It's a seedy area, but it might be cool. Well, I mean, that might be. I know it's cool for, for street photography. I like this view here of these stairs, the signage there, and then people on the stairs. What I really want is a cool subject coming down the stairs. Would be nice. And I'm gonna go to F5, 6 for this. Oh, let's say F4, just to get a little more depth of field, a little more sharpness. This couple is good. But in the meantime, that guy's going down the stairs on the other side. It wasn't the most interesting scene, but I kind of like this uh, double story scene. And of course, it's tack sharp because the zone was right. Very good. You know what? I was going to go that way, but let's go up here. I haven't been up here on this street in a long time. And things changed a bit. All right, because there's a lot of construction going on. So let's see how it's looking these days. I should point out, there's a bar here called Fight Club, and it's a bar and a kickboxing gym in the same time. So I guess you can go kickbox and then get drunk, or you can get drunk and watch people kickbox. I've never been there, I don't know how it works, but you know, free plug to them, I guess. <laughs> Check it out. Um, but yeah, I've never been there. But sometimes I walk by and I see people training in there and other people are just drinking. Yeah, a little bit of construction. So they're, they tore down a bunch of buildings here and they're slowly building some huge like commercial development of which there are tons around uh, Shibuya these days. This is gorgeous to me, the way that wall reflects in the car. Reflections are another thing that I find work better with a bit of a longer lens. Not always, but often, because usually the reflections look good when you're standing back a bit. And as you get closer, they're not quite as interesting. 
But with the wide lens, I would be getting too much other stuff. But let's see if getting closer. Yeah. See, if I stand here, the reflection's not on the car anymore. So I have to stand all the way back here. And if I had a, a 28, for example, which I also love, I have a good 28 for my Nikon. And I use it kind of rarely these days, but I use it, used to use it a lot. And, um, you know, I'd get a lot of other stuff around. But with the 40, I get a nice composition that I like. Less is more simplistic composition. I'm actually going to go back even a little more. Because now I want the car, but also the weird sculpture thing on the side. Okay. Yeah, that's less interesting. The tighter shot was better. But yeah, cool. I like that. I wish the car was a different color or even a different shape. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's pretty neat. From this angle, I'm going to shoot the neon sign. I love this neon sign. One of the best remaining examples of gorgeous retro neon. Again, not really a street photo, but whatever, it's cool. Honestly, wish it was a little later, but it's nice. Maybe a little more from the middle. Wow, well, then I can't see the sign quite as much. Yeah, so see, this is where I'm just putting the center or the focus point on the subject, in this case, the sign which happens to be in the middle. And I'm just seeing, is it green? If it's green, it means the camera's telling me it's in focus, in which case I'm ready to shoot. So manual focus, like actually focusing is also quite easy with the Z plus the manual lens. Let's go back to street settings again. And let's go back on the, the main street. I should point out this nice neon sign that I just photographed. Well, this just that happens to be a, a topless burlesque, you know, club. <laughs> so, you know, check it out. It's called, it says right there, it's called Dotonbori Gekijo. I've never been there, I swear, I've never been, but I've been wanting to try it because <laughs> I think this place is not going to last long. I think like many things in Tokyo, even these old, old school kind of strip theaters are going to go away someday. Now I kind of like this uh, this place here. It's a cool look. Okay. This is, you know, like I said, this is the red light district. So this place here that I just photographed, not very interesting, but it's missing something. But what it is, is it's like a free information center about this, uh, you know, red light district. So if you want to know where all the good services are, this is where you, where you get that info. Okay. So, these are all over the place in Tokyo, so if you know what to look for, like if you know what, what it says, I should say, you'll know what they are. Okay. I think I got enough photos of it. It's not that interesting. It needs somebody going in or out, or somebody smoking in front of it, somebody on the stairs. You know, it needs something. But... I also am kind of careful to not, you know, like despite photographing people in public on the street, I am sensitive to privacy. And I do care about, like, if I, if I feel that I'm gonna post someone's photo in a way that, you know, compromises them. Oh, sorry. The guy, there's a guy in there and he said, he, he, was, he smiled and he was like, very small, like, in a polite way. And that just means, hey, no photo. Like, okay. And that per perfectly ties in what I was just saying. So I don't want, like if somebody tells me no photo, of course no photo, but also if somebody's going into a strip club, is it good, okay, or like right for me to show their face while they're going in there? Maybe they don't want to be seen going in there. Let's cross here. So I try to be mindful of that. And if, if I'm going to photograph like a, for the, you know, red light district info center, I always think it's missing a person. I would love to get a person in that scene, but I would want to get them in a way where they can't be identified. Otherwise I feel kind of bad showing their face. I used to not worry about that so much. I didn't care, but I kind of developed some ethics, I suppose. Okay, so let, let's go down this side street here. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Here's a cool scene. A 
I love people eating noodles. It was weird, I doubted myself. I had my zone set, but because as I said, when I have more time to focus, I, um, you know, I focus it, actually focus it. But in this case, it was the zone, like it was actually correct. That was about the right distance for this shot. Okay, let's go down the street here. Now something that I always struggle with, and I probably mentioned it in a previous video, but is that, you know, more and more as I'm doing street photography, like subjects are becoming less and less interesting for me. Like it has to be something really interesting before I shoot. Like just people walking down the street sort of doesn't get my attention anymore, whereas it used to. I just tried there, those people were kind of interesting, but I don't know. Like it, so it has to be something beyond, like I said earlier, just someone walking down the street and someone looking at the phone. Because if that's all it is, there's not much to it, right? So yeah, I mean, so I find that I shoot less and less, which is fine for me because that's kind of how I shoot. I just wander around. If I don't shoot much, that's okay. But for making these videos, it's tricky because I feel like I need to produce something to put into the video. If I don't, then like, what are you gonna, just gonna watch me walk around? But this is the, the process of street photography. I, and I was getting a little bit chatty. That might have been kind of cool because they were like in the reflection as well. Yeah. The smoking area is always interesting. Like people smoking. And I know that that's, that's probably like maybe one, one grade above people on their phone. It's not that interesting, but it's a little bit more interesting. At least it's got that visual impact of the smoke, but there's nobody really interesting right now. Right, maybe there's something here with these girls up there in the cafe. I'd love to get somebody interesting here. But, yeah, as I said, it's just kind of people. So much going on. Sometimes it kind of works just to get low like this and let them come to you. But I think that's about it for today. I think I've shot quite a bit. Honestly, I don't think I, I think I got anything really good today, but I do think I kind of demonstrated the point of this video, which is manual focus with 40 millimeter lens, in this case, on a Z camera like the Z6. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And of course, if you can support us on Patreon, that would be great. Click the referral links below. Um, anything you can do helps us out a lot. But thank you so much for watching, and remember always, challenge your eye.